Alex Arrans here with another reaction. So today we're going to continue with our Golden Girl series, this time with season five, episode three, titled The Accurate Conception. As always, if you're looking for the full-length reaction to this episode or any of my other content, you can find that on Patreon and the link will be in the description below. And if you cannot support us on Patreon, it's completely fine. You could support us directly here on YouTube by liking this video, commenting, and subscribing. So without further ado, let's get into our episode. You've already got breakfast ready. Becky and I were up till all hours talking. Who's Becky? You, my daughter, and I have oh, the daughter. like that since ever. No, <laughs> that's fun. Oh, yeah. We did each other's hair and laughed and laughed. I can see why. <laughs> what? Why did you just come oh, for the you kill? Still here? You were supposed to have your checkup with Dr. Siegel this morning. Oh, you didn't hear about Dr. Siegel. You died? You're what? I'm not going. <laughs> Rose, could you give me a hand? Oh, sure. If you will excuse me, Becky and I are having breakfast on the lanai. We're still bonding. Oh. Dorothy, how come we never bond? We're from before bonding and quality time. <laughs> We're from when people stayed together because they had no choice. <laughs> Ma, would I be insisting on this checkup if I didn't care about you? Okay, okay, Ma, if you don't want to go to the doctor, you don't have to go to the doctor, all right? I'll tell you what, why don't we spend tomorrow afternoon together? We'll work on our bonding. I'll take you to Wolfie's for an egg cream. A chocolate egg cream? You betcha. Oh, uh, the doctors. A chocolate egg cream. <laughs> Forget it, Dorothy. I smell a pony ride. Uh-huh. Well, I never thought the day would come, but we are finally the same age. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stay longer? Oh, Mama, I can't stay because we're telling each other everything, right? Oy. Everything. No more secrets. Oh, good. Mama. She pregnant. I'm getting impregnated on Monday. Oh, she's getting impregnated. Okay. <laughs> She's gonna have a solo dolo? I've decided the best thing for me is to go to a sperm bank and get artificially inseminated. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that might not be okay for Blanche, though. Why would you do something like this just to hurt me? <laughs> Why don't you wait till you get married? I don't want to get married. Well, then at least wait until I'm dead. Oh. Well, damn. Might be too late. Wait until all my friends are dead, too. Uh-uh. What do your friends have to do with it? The last thing I need is whispering at my funeral. I can't believe you're reacting like this. We got so close this past week, I thought I could tell you anything. Well, anything but this. Damn. <laughs> well, Mama, I'm gonna do this whether you like it or not. So this is the thanks I get for all those cold nights when you were a baby crying? And I'd have to get up out of bed and grope around in the dark for my slippers and robe, make my way all the way downstairs and scream for the governess. Girl. You're gonna have a grandbaby. That's a good thing. Damn, girl, okay. Oh yeah, we are stress eating. We are frustrated Hungry eating. Hungry or suicidal? <laughs> It's She's not easy angry. Being the mother of a child with her own free will. <laughs> I knew I felt the refrigerator. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me it was dinner time? <laughs> Ma, it's not dinner, it's the middle of the night. Good, then I'm dressed for it. <laughs> Blanche is upset. Well, you would be too if your daughter. Oh, I can't even say it. What could have happened? The two of you were getting Yes, so she's just getting impregnated. My little girl is going to have a baby by artificial insemination. <laughs> <gasps> I just can't bear to think about it. Oh I'm just being silly, I? My back hurts so much. <laughs> can't look at them. <laughs> oh, For my God. God. Sake, somebody say he something. can't say nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Big help. <laughs> Dorothy, what about you? You're always the sensible one around here, the free modern thinker who keeps up with the times. Now, what do you think? Ooh. <laughs> and there is no change in her mind. They don't. It might not be so bad. I'm gonna get a grandbaby. Just last week, I was reading that you can buy the sperm of Nobel Prize winners. Nah. 
Or was it Star Search? Uh, oh my God. <laughs> They're winners. That's what matters. They're winners. Bye. Well, sperm used to be free. It was all over the place. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's not that I mind becoming a young grandmother again. Nobody believes it anyway. Please. <laughs> it's just that it seems so unnatural. No daddy for the baby. And no fun trying. I'm gonna have to agree with Blanche on this one. Half the fun is in getting there. And boy, did your father and I have fun trying for you. <laughs> No, I don't TMI, think I TMI. This. I wasn't going to tell you until you're 60, but I think you can handle it now. <laughs> <laughs> we lived in New York at the time, and there was the San Gennaro Festival every year. And your father, may he rest in peace until I get there. <laughs> until so she gets there. The festivities one year, he couldn't wait till we got home. <laughs> so he took me right there behind the sausage and pepper stand. Jeez. So you love it so much. Hey, we were behind the garbage cans. It's not like we were in front of everybody. <laughs> All our children were conceived on special St. Olaf holidays. Adam was conceived on the day of the Princess Pig when they had the pig crowning. And Janella was conceived on Hay Day. That's the day we St. Olafians celebrate hay. <laughs> Blanche, what Rebecca is doing is really not so terrible. I mean, look, among the four of us, each of us conceived our children in a different way. I was totally unconscious. <laughs> when I came to, there was Stan, carving a notch in his dashboard. I never bought that unconscious story. No, I swear, he must have slipped me something. Apparently. <laughs> It was natural. Well, not all the time. Oh. There's some other stuff. But I probably shouldn't tell you till you're 70. <laughs> no man is going to want to marry you with a baby. Blanche, there are a lot of people who are single parents. And they're doing just fine. Exactly. Yeah, look at me. Well, you're a widow. Difference. And your child is old. The uh. old man could be just around the corner. Well, and he may not be. I may turn around a dozen corners and not find anyone. So, instead of trying, you're just gonna give up and do this crazy baby thing. Crazy baby thing? What I am doing, Mother, is taking control of my life and having the family I need. Well, I would certainly never have a baby artificially. And I do not approve of you doing it either. Well, if that's the way you want it, Mama, then you're gonna lose me and your grandchild. Aww. Blanche, don't be so rigid in your beliefs that, again, you'd lose a daughter. Oh, I just feel terrible. If I'm gonna spend the night tossing and turning, at least I want to wake up smelling like aftershave. <laughs> <laughs> morning. Good morning, Rebecca. I got up early and did some research. There's a sperm bank not far from here. How convenient. <laughs> no kidding, do they have a drive-up window? <laughs> I, I thought, Mama, that we could go down there, and once you see these places are legitimate, you won't be so upset. Blanche, would it help if I were to go with you? Well, I'll come too. I'll bring my camera. <laughs> Why do you bring your camera? I guess you pick somebody? It's never too soon to start a baby. Oh. Oh boy, we're going to a sperm bank. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia's so excited. I can't a better way to pep up a slow day. <laughs> Ma, you're not going. Why not? I don't think you should be doing anything as strenuous as going to a sperm bank until you've had that checkup. Too bad. All right, I'll go to the doctor, but this better be a great sperm bank. <laughs> so, I guess we're going? Oh, I guess. I, what does one wear to a sperm bank? 
Something attractive in rubber. <laughs> How did things go at the doctor, Sophia? He said I had the body of a 40-year-old. A dead 40-year-old. <laughs> the doctor's gonna be a little while. I guess we ought to sit down. I suppose it's safe. Mama, you're acting silly. Sperm can't live outside the human body. Does your mother know you're doing this for a living? <laughs> Back during World War II, my best friend, Claire Osterhaus's husband, was in the army and stationed in France. Well, five months after he left St. Olaf, she got pregnant. That's called cheating. <laughs> A lot of people thought she was fooling around, but she told me that sperm must have swum from Normandy, across the Atlantic, up to the St. Lawrence Sea, uh -uh. into the Great Lakes, and then over to Minnesota. Nope. And what did you think, Rose? She cheated. Well, I know those little guys are supposed to be good swimmers. <laughs> but I think it had to come over by mail. You're so cute. You're so adorable. I bet this is more fun than giving blood. <laughs> Any questions? Plenty. Can just anybody walk in off the street and make my daughter pregnant? We screen the applicants very carefully. We know everything about them. We know their body type, their IQ, their eye color. Any more questions? Yes, just one. What in hell are we doing here? I feel like I'm in the middle of some awful dream. Yet I know it can't be a dream because there are no boy dancers. <laughs> I just cannot believe you are actually going to give money to someone like this sperm pusher. Sperm pusher? You are a Devereaux. A Devereaux has never had to pay for it. I certainly haven't. She's always depended on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> oh, I love her. She's more Sorry, focused on the son-in-law. enough to understand. Thank you for your time. Ladies. Just out of curiosity, you don't have any Tony Bennett socked away, do you? <laughs> well, actually, there comes a time when you have to let your daughter make her own decisions. Yes. I remember, Dorothy, when you were deciding what you wanted to be. Ah, uh, yeah. I wanted to go to college and be a school teacher. Pop wanted me to be a cosmetician in a funeral parlor. <laughs> He always liked looking at dead people. Yeah. Dead people in the Dodgers. <laughs> Blanche, the point is she let me make my own choices. Now, this argument that you're having with Rebecca is not about artificial insemination. Like hell, it isn't. Well, it's about control, it is, yeah. But the bigger part, Blanche, is about control. Yes, and the more you try to make her see things the way you see things, the more she'll resist. And then you run the risk of never seeing her again. Exactly. And never seeing your grandchild. Never. Think about it, Blanche. Oh, damn, I don't want that to happen. Then I suggest you apologize. She doesn't want to do that either, but she I has know, to. I know Rebecca is a grown woman, but to me, she's still just a little girl. Now, how do you say I'm sorry to your own child? Oh, honey, oh, um. It's, um, it's not easy for her to say it. <laughs> He's itching right now. Um, oh, come on, Blanche, say it. I'm sorry. There, what she just said. There, <laughs> oh, I knew you could do it. But oh, she didn't do it, so but. Dumb about this whole thing. Should have respected what you wanted to do. You really mean that? Yes, I do. Let me drive you to the airport, and, and we'll think up baby names on the way. <laughs> Great. I'll go get rid of the cab. Oh, Blanche, oh, Blanche, you did the right thank you. thing. Thank you, you girls were right. And hey, listen, if my daughter wants to get herself artificially <laughs> inseminated, I guess that's not so bad. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh, 
All right, fam. So we just finished watching season five, episode three of the Golden Girls titled The Accurate Conception. That was such a fun episode. We got to see Rebecca, Blanche's daughter. So we finally got to meet another one, um, which is pretty awesome. And she comes in and lets uh, her mama know that she would like to uh, have a family of her own because she doesn't have a partner. And instead of just waiting for the partner to come, she feels like it's time for her to become a mom. So she wants to get artificially inseminated. And I know back in those days, so if it's already in 85, so by then we're in, in the early 90s or maybe 89-ish. So in 89, 90, um, I can understand how you know artificial insemination is, is still more or less new. Now a lot of families are made that way. So I can understand the, um, you know, Blanche being so reticent and just be like, no, I don't know. I don't want this for my daughter. I want better for my daughter because I mean, parents just want, you know, the best for, for their kids. They want the fairy tale life for their kids. So, um, you know, that the kid, the partner, the family, the white picket fence, the house, everything. So they, that's what they want for, for us. And when, we go against the grain and want to do something different because whether what we would have wanted has not happened or just life happens, or we just don't want the same dream that our parents have for us. It's very hard for them to let go and allow us just live and be our own self. And that's what was happening with Blanche when it comes to her daughter. So she just wanted to be able to control her daughter just out of, fear of something bad happening just wanting her daughter to have the best future possible and she couldn't see that that best future might include a child with no father and that's okay and i'm happy that ultimately they were able to to see that and their faces at artificial insemination i get it because you know one of my great friends um, ended up having a child that way and even for me it was like what why 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 but now that that baby boy is born and he is amazing and i can understand now a little bit better because i've had somebody go through that whole ordeal so um yeah it was nice that they put a light on this subject because again a lot of families are born this way so it's great that we're able to see um you know one of our characters or the daughter of one of our characters um be able to start a family that that way and it shows us that there's different types of family and family is family however the child is born if they're born surrounded by love that's all that matters right whether they were artificially inseminated or not so i really enjoyed this episode um so when it comes to the mvp um it would technically go to her daughter but because i don't have her daughter as a doll oops sorry for my hair it's going to go to miss blanche um because she showed growth in this episode even though um, again that is not what she would have wanted for her daughter but she ultimately she accepted that her daughter is her own person she's allowed to make her own decisions and uh she might have another grandbaby and she accepts that even though she doesn't like the how the baby is going to be conceived but she's accepting the fact that she might have a another grandkid and i think just for that we need to give her the MVP this episode. So yay. Um, I really enjoyed it. And even though I'm a little bit loopy, it made me feel a little bit better. So I'm really happy that I got to watch this episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah. Bye for now.